Oh, we're back with another one. Everyone hates Elon. I got to do everyone hates Elon instead of Tesla because this is about Neuralink. Neuralink is not Tesla, but let's get it. Elon Musk isn't telling us something about Neuralink. Now, that might be clickbait, but shout out to the Tesla space. Let's get started in this video, okay? I didn't say that. Let's get started. Let's get active. Let's just jump right into it. Let's go. Elon Musk's Neuralink brain implant is pushing the boundaries of what modern neuroscience can achieve. I think that's something we can all agree on. But the company might also be pushing the boundaries of what is considered to be safe or even possible. Uh, I need proof. I need evidence. ...when it comes to brain-computer interface technology. Neuralink is in a vulnerable position right now as they begin to face the realities of human experimentation. And in the midst of all this, a new competitor is rising up, a ghost from Elon Musk's past has returned to take the throne with a better, safer brain implant. This could be a problem. Proof. We need proof first, all right? Show me that it's better and safer. Let's begin with a story. This is Benjamin Rappaport. You probably don't recognize him, but he was one of the nine founding fathers of Neuralink back in the year 2017. Elon Musk says that he interviewed over 1,000 people before deciding on the team of eight doctors, scientists, and engineers that would join him in the creation of a new brain implant technology. And looking at Ben's resume, it's easy to see why he made the cut. A master's degree in physics and mathematics from Harvard, a master of science from Oxford, a PhD in engineering from MIT, and a medical degree from Harvard Medical School. He was working as a resident neurosurgeon in the years before Neuralink came to be. So that is all very important to establish that this is not just another tech bro. This is a person who brings massive credibility to the table. So when we- Wait, hold on, stop. I want to actually point this out. So guys, if you ever listen to Elon's stories and the rest of the videos, you'll see that there's one constant thing that happens. And there's a lot of experts across the board in Tesla, Neuralink, SpaceX, and et cetera. But one of the things people lack that are experts is pushing boundaries. So just because the experts doesn't mean necessarily that they could push the company as far as most people think. So they can have a laundry list of credentials. And historically, people who've actually worked with Elon, whether it's in Tesla, SpaceX, and et cetera, has had the same laundry list of credentials, education. They're the experts in their field. But for whatever particular reason, it's always been Elon's based off of probably the first principles rule, but whatever, has always pushed them to go beyond the expertise, pushed them to go up on beyond anything that they knew. So they've always argued with Elon about what could or couldn't be done. And Elon has always pushed them further. And so net net, I don't know about this guy. I don't know what he can and can't do. And if he's that type of expert that can push the boundaries, but I just wanted to make that clear because most of the time we kind of see experts and we just bow to them like, man, they know everything. They're going to innovate. And that's not true. And we tell you that Benjamin left Neuralink in March 2018, just one year after the company was announced to the public. We know that this decision carries some weight. And the primary reason for Ben's departure is also the key to today's story. Safety. Without getting too deep into the weeds on how brain-computer interfaces work, we know that the brain is teeming with electrical activity. Everything Allegedly. Everything that you do, everything you feel, everything that you know, it all begins with trillions of electrical signals bouncing around through billions of neurons inside of the gray matter of the human brain. This has been known for a hundred years. Hans Berger started his experiments with electroencephalography in 1924, but even after a century of observation, the human brain is still mysterious. We know that the best clues to solve our mystery are found closest to the source inside the human skull. We can observe brain activity from the outside by placing electrodes on the scalp, but the signals are muffled. Imagine you're living in an apartment and your next door neighbor is having a party. You can try to listen in through the wall and that will provide some information about what's going on. You might know what kind of music they're listening to, the approximate size of the group if they're laughing or arguing. Imagine that the people attending the party are neurons in a human brain. By observing them through a wall or a skull, you can measure the overall vibe of the party, but you will never know the details of what went on inside. But if you were able to walk through the door and enter the room, suddenly there would be infinitely more detail to learn about the party. You would hear the music clearly. You would see the people. You would know what they are saying. And one Man, great example, <laughs> good example. It's inside, you could go one step further and walk right up to a neuron and start a conversation. From here, there's no telling how much you can learn. This is all a metaphor for the invasiveness of BCI. But instead of opening a door, we have to cut through skin and bone. And in order to initiate that personal conversation with a neuron, we need to penetrate the brain matter. This all comes at a cost. We know that Elon Musk is a minimalist. What's the cost? When it comes to design. But he's a maximalist when it comes to performance. The fastest cars, the most powerful rockets, and his approach to Neuralink 
is no different. Elon would never be satisfied with just eavesdropping on the party. He's going straight to interrogating the neurons as close up as possible. The cost of an invasive BCI implant is always going to be damage to the brain. There is no way to skirt around the fact that when you penetrate the brain tissue, you cause physical damage. The first invasive... Yeah, that's all right, man. There's a lot of brain damage from TikTok. ...invasive brain implant dates back to the early 2000s, the Utah Array, created by BlackRock Neuroscience. It's like a very small bed of nails that would penetrate the outer cortex of the brain with tiny rigid pins. The depth of the implant would typically be around 1.5 millimeters, and these implants are known to cause scar tissue and physical rejection from the brain material, so they can't be used as long-term permanent solutions. Once the scar tissue forms, the ability to have a conversation with a neuron is greatly reduced. This is the primary challenge that Neuralink was hoping to overcome with their own BCI design, one that used ultra-thin and ultra-flexible threads to interface with the brain tissue. The idea being that these microscopic threads would carry the electrode connections into the brain so gently that the body wouldn't even notice. And hence, wouldn't try to reject the implant or form any scar tissue. And this Okay, so we're trying to make sure that we don't cause any damage. Okay, so there goes your safety. I'm allowing him to continue, guys, but just take note. We're worried about safety. Theory could prove to be true, but so far it's proven to be ineffective at maintaining a stable connection to the brain. Neuralink patient zero, Noland Arbaugh, experienced the successful implantation of 64 Neuralink threads. These threads carried a total of 1,024 individual electrodes directly into his cerebral cortex, and this happened for the first time in late January 2024. By February, 85% of those threads had retracted from the brain. They fell out. And this is a problem that Neuralink may have been expecting. Several anonymous sources who claim to work at the company told Reuters that the thread retraction had been an issue with monkey and pig test subjects for years. This is unconfirmed reporting, but it wouldn't be surprising given the severity of the retraction issue with Nolan's implant. It would be Well, no, it would be surprising. Just because somebody said that about monkeys doesn't make it true. So let's just stick to the facts of this patient, and that's what happened. 85% detached. Got you. What people say and what they told the media and what the media then translated, I don't know about none of that. I'm not saying it's true or false, but let's just go with what we do know about this patient and 85%. It would be weird for this to have happened for the first time so many years into the testing phase. What's even more troubling is that Nolan has said that he was never even informed on the possibility of thread retraction. He was completely taken by surprise when the problem occurred. Neuralink allegedly, allegedly he was never notified. Claims to have a solution, though, and this has been approved by the FDA, but it's not exactly an ideal fix. And this relates directly to Benjamin Rappaport's concerns with patient safety in this field. So the original Utah array with the rigid little pins penetrated one and a half millimeters deep into the brain. Neuralink took that even further with their flexible threads, reaching depths between three and five millimeters into Nolan's brain map. But this was clearly not effective, so the new plan is to place the threads eight millimeters deep into Neuralink's second human patient. For those with trouble visualizing what a millimeter is, eight millimeters is just a bit less than one third of an inch. So that's getting pretty deep. Neuralink started off at double the industry standard, and now they're already going to double that again, and double the depth means double the potential damage to the brain matter, double the potential for negative side effects. Now, this is still not nearly as deep as other current electrode procedures like deep brain stimulation, for example, but it's- Oh, okay, so it's not as deep as deep brain stimulation, but here comes the big but, right? So new to the industry, yes, when it comes to Neuralinks, new to anything ever, no, when it comes to brain stimulation. But let's continue. It's still very much unknown what kind of damage 64 insertions each 8 millimeters deep across a relatively small segment of the brain might do. It's also not known if this change will even solve the problem for Neuralink. If we are still... And that's what happens with innovation, guys. Nothing is known for sure, right? And so that happens. In pioneering technology, this happens. Seeing retraction with the threads in the next patient, then it's possible that Neuralink's design, as innovative as it may be, just doesn't work. This is obviously not the kind of outcome that a business leader like Elon Musk is going to accept, but in science, there is always the potential of being proven wrong. It's the reason that we do experiments in the first place. There's yeah, I don't like that. He kind of insinuated, well, he's a businessman and he don't really care about the science. He just don't want to be proven wrong. That's false, but let's continue. There's a very real potential here that Neuralink is just another very good idea in theory that didn't work out in reality. There are no shortage of these failed ideas in history, and it's an outcome that we should be prepared for. What if you didn't need to penetrate the brain eight millimeters or three millimeters or even one millimeter? What if you could get all of the information you need just by walking through the door of the party and going no further than that? This is the question that Benjamin Rappaport left Neuralink to investigate, and he may have already found the answer. This is the layer seven cortical interface. It's an ultra thin film array that's only one fifth the thickness of a human hair and covered with 1024 tiny electrode sensors. 
It's designed to sit on top of your brain where it can very effectively eavesdrop on all of the conversations that your neurons are having without ever having to cause any physical damage to your brain matter. Sounds like a pretty good deal. The Layer 7 was created by Precision Neuroscience, who you probably never heard of, but this is the company that was founded by Benjamin Rappaport after he left Neuralink. And this thin film array is the safer, less invasive VCI technology that he had envisioned back in 2018. One that Elon Musk would have considered to be inferior because it doesn't penetrate deep enough into the neurons. But in reality, the opposite has proven to be true. While Neuralink's total electrode count in human trials has... I want to see if it's actually effective and efficient. Let's see that. I want to see that. Mm, might be right. ...dropped over time from 1,024 down to just 154, Precision has been pushing forward, starting with one cortical interface and then adding a second to the same patient for a total of 2,048 electrodes. That was last summer, and just recently, in April 2024, Precision set a new record with four interfaces implanted on one human brain for a total of 4,096 electrodes, all reading brain signals at the same time. The thin film array is designed to be implanted through a small slit that's cut into the patient's skull. Then the electrodes are slid in between the brain and its outer protective layer, called the dura. The thin, flexible nature of the array allows it to conform perfectly to the wrinkled shape of the cerebral cortex, like saran wrap. And then a wireless transmitter is placed underneath the user's skin that plugs into the electrodes and broadcasts but the neural signal wirelessly. I want to know if that means it was successful, right? Does that mean it was successful just because it read that many times? Show me something. I want to see some activity. I want to see somebody do something. Show me that. Because I've seen the monkey doing something. <laughs> and then I also saw the real human doing something with Neuralink. So I want to see this precision. I want to see it actually do something. Wirelessly through Bluetooth. With such a small, thin cut into the skull, just one millimeter across, there can be multiple arrays placed on different regions of the brain without compromising the patient's skull integrity. You could have multiple Neuralinks, but the skull is pretty quickly going to start resembling Swiss cheese with all of those holes cut into it. Precision has already tested its Layer 7 cortical interface with 14 human patients over the past three years. This is made possible because the thin film array is so easy. Okay, there we go. ...and harmless to place onto and remove from the brain that the procedure can be incorporated into any routine neural surgery. So what Precision does, they find a case where a patient is already undergoing open brain surgery for something like a benign tumor removal or Parkinson's disease treatment that they simply place their array on the surface of the patient's exposed brain and begin recording data. In some of these cases, the patient is awake through the entire procedure and will participate in motion capture activities that map physical movement of the hands and fingers to electrical signals in their brain. This is a huge advantage to Precision that Neuralink cannot match right now. Neuralink is only going ahead with their implant in people who already have full body paralysis, so that limits their research to imagined movements. They can't capture physical movement of their patient at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then when Precision has got their data, they simply lift the array off of the patient's brain and their head is sewn back up with no trace that the BCI was ever there. What the company has already been able to prove is that you don't really need to penetrate the brain in order to collect high resolution data from the neurons. You only need to figure out how to bypass the skull. Just being... Well, I don't know. We're just trying to collect data or are we trying to actually do some things? Now, from my understanding, Neuralink actually does some things versus just capture the data back out of the brain. But I think he did make a good point where people are still mobile so that they can use their body and that could also capture that data. So that's very interesting. But then again, I'm just the party of, look, if people are consenting and they understand what they're going through, allegedly, you're saying, and he was saying that he did not know, but I don't know if that's true or false. But as long as people are consenting to the process, then it's completely fine. I don't think it's inhumane after that. If people are consenting, they want to do things. People are consenting to go to war, right? And if somebody is consenting to be an experiment to a revolutionary technology that can help a lot of people, then that's their choice as a human. I wouldn't stop that just like normies don't want to stop people from deleting themselves. Being very close on top of the brain matter is still very good, or at least good enough for any practical medical reason. Maybe Neuralink still needs to stick people with threads to do Elon's whole merge the human brain with AI thing or whatever that's supposed to be. But if we just want to help people with disabilities and illness to live better lives, then it's already been proven that we do not have to saw holes in their skull. That is not proven. It has not always been proven. Right. The, the people, from my understanding, have not been able to do anything, at least in this video of him describing it. So just collecting the information, that's not all we're doing. Unless you just want to go in somebody's brain to collect information, then that's also a different type of objective. <laughs> skull or damage their brains to do that. So in many ways, what Precision has done here is dramatically lower the barrier to entry for brain-computer interface, much more so than Neuralink ever could. And innovations like this are exactly the kind of development that will make brain-computer interface one of the biggest stories of the decade to come. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I mean, I got to see something actually happen and then actually do something. Collecting data is one thing, right? But we don't know. We don't know. 
That was just saying stuff. But let's see what's going on to the actual guy on the ground. Facilitating conditions communicate and control external devices with their thoughts. And I will read, sit down, uh, sit down rather with the patient who received that implant in an exclusive broadcast interview. He now here goes the alleged victim, right? But let, let, let's continue. Is with us now in Atlanta, Georgia. Will, good to see you. And, and this story here, it's a big one. It certainly is, DeMarco. It's uh, the future is arriving faster and faster these days. And it was my honor to get to sit with Nolan Arbaugh, who was a fantastic subject, a great guy. He's been through a lot, paralyzed for nearly eight years now. But he says this Neuralink device has really changed his life. I didn't have anything to wake up for in the morning. This really changed his life. This is the same guy. This is what I'm saying, man. You got to watch out for people. And that guy got over 400,000. But here goes the guy he said that was a victim. And Elon is penetrating his brain. And also because Elon's a capitalist, he don't want to fail ever. And he still want to endanger people. And because this one guy quit and left to precision based off of safety. And he drilled a couple slits in a couple people's head that were doing other things. And then collected data and slid back out. That's what you get from his invention, from Precision. Shout outs to Precision. Competition is good. I don't have anything against it. Now we go back to Neuralink and we got somebody on the ground, the alleged person who said he wasn't informed of anything and rejected 85%, et cetera. Okay, now we got him in this interview saying it's changed his life in a real way. Now get those other people from Precision and say, hey, you slipped a couple slits up in my brain and laid that stuff up on my head and brought it out and it's changed my life no nothing life-changing happened but let's continue um and this has changed that for me in a gma broadcast exclusive nolan darbaugh the first human implanted with a Neuralink chip in his brain is telling his story i accepted that i was paralyzed and that that was my life i always held out hope that it would all get better at 22 years old nolan says he dove headfirst in waist deep water struck something and sustained a spinal cord injury he couldn't move from the shoulders down from the time of your injury until earlier this year what was your daily life like i mean one thing about being paralyzed is that there's a lot of time to sit and think and so i thought through basically my whole life and realized all the mistakes i made and what i could do better then, just last year, Noland, now 30, receiving a life-changing opportunity. One day, one of my buddies from college uh, called me up. Um, we talked pretty regularly, and he was like, hey, Neuralink, they opened up the human trials. Um, and I said, what's Neuralink? Neuralink, co-founded by Elon Musk, is an experimental implantable brain-computer interface, or BCI, a chip surgically implanted by a robot and connected by threads to a patient's brain that allows the patient to control a computer or smartphone with their mind. And this is all from there to there. Yeah, man. Wow. Neuralink is not the only company working on this. See, there you go. Dude's happy, living his life, said things have changed, but that doesn't matter. I guess the other guy wanted to make an accusation or allegations that it's dangerous, and this guy left because of that. Maybe that guy just left because he wanted to create his own company, all right? <laughs> maybe you ever thought about that? Like, I'm not hating on him. Like, maybe he just wanted to leave to go do his own thing on this technology. Several others are also testing their BCIs in paralyzed volunteers. Nolan now joins that small group as Neuralink's first patient. I was just very happy that I would be a part of something that I believe is so monumental and this next step forward of helping people with paralysis. What can you do now with the chip implanted that you could not do prior? Um, I can control a computer just like anyone else can, which is not something I was able to do beforehand. Boom, come on. And that's what most people end up doing with most of their life anyways nowadays, right? Scrolling through TikTok, Netflix, and then chilling. But he has that freedom and that sovereignty to do that now on his own. No, 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 my fault. Precision read some people's brain waves, and that's the revolution. It didn't, that's it. That's the revolution. Just read some brain waves and 6,045 and clap your hands and say, oh, we scientists collected information. We're, we're cool instead of changing people's lives like this one. Now, I don't have a problem with precision again. It was just the way that guy did that video. You just played some music? Yeah, yeah man. That's awesome. <laughs> Do you worry because you are the first patient that something unforeseen could go wrong now that this is inside your head? Now, tell this guy. I have not seen this, but guy, tell these normies, like that guy in that last video, what they don't realize when you're coming from the bottom when you've been bottom out and you can't walk and you're almost a vegetable. Let's see what he says. And I haven't seen this. I don't know what he's saying, but I'm pretty sure he's going to enlighten normies who have their hands and feet and they are not paralyzed from the neck down. 
because I had an aunt that was paralyzed just like this. My aunt was paralyzed just like this from the neck down. Mm, I wouldn't say worry. There was something where I knew that if I did this, then it would take a lot of headache and heartache away from the people down the road. Just last week, news that some of the threads in Nolan's brain had retracted, affecting the performance of the device. How'd you take the news when they told you that the threads had retracted? Yeah, it was really hard. It was very, very hard to give up all of the amazing things that I was able to do. I think I had like cried basically afterwards. The problem becoming an opportunity for the makers of Neuralink to explore solutions. The reason we do clinical trial um, and you know, early feasibility trial is to uncover these sort of issues as early as possible before they get marketed. And we rolled up our sleeves and you know found various different ways to, you know, for Nolan, be able to recover his performance, which we have successfully been able to do. As for Nolan, the future of the technology, which we have successfully been able to do. Woo, man, sometimes you got to dig deeper than some nor normie. Technology only looks bright. It's going to be amazing when someone can have a spinal cord injury, go into a hospital, get surgery, and walk out a couple days later. I think it's going to happen. I don't think it's as far away as people might think. <laughs> And that's what matters, man. Yo, shout outs to him. Congratulations. And yeah, it's groundbreaking technology. The retraction did happen, but he's positive going forward. Once we touch down and touch bases with the actual person versus another normie going in between trying to virtue signal, it's always that. Don't you find it quite funny? It's like with the Elon and the stock shareholder, it's always these representatives talking about their protecting safety and everybody else. But when you go down and actually talk to the individuals, like the story is just completely different, right? Oh, you you shareholders are victims of Elon. And then you go down and do a vote and everybody's still with it. And like, no, we support them. We, we understand what's going on. Thank you, but no, thank you. And they're like, no, we're here to protect you. Here, we watch this video. Everyone hates Elon. Hey, man, no, I'm just saying that. He might not be looking out for, you know, safety. And this guy left and he know what he's talking about. But he's not Elon. But, you know, Elon's a businessman. And he just want to win versus safety like this guy. He read brains. And that's the accomplishment. We go down and talk to the real life people. And they're like, bro, I've been bottom out. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything. And so, yes, it didn't work out and it didn't pan out. And I was heartbroken. But I'm back in the game. We're fixing this. We're moving forward. This is innovation. This is not a fairy tale. Sometimes when people just, people are always hoping for more and, and, and better. And people like Elon and whether it's Tesla, SpaceX are out here doing it. They're changing people's lives. Other people are saying things that are not accurate. And it's like virtue signaling, acting like they really care. And I'm not saying they don't. What I'm saying is they're not on the ground making changes. Man, much respects to Elon. Shout outs to everybody at Neuralink. I appreciate your time here. And as you can see, the brain games is continuing. And everyone loves to hate Elon. But guess what? We live in the greatest country in the world, USA. Everyone hates Elon slash Tesla.